Good afternoon, I'm Milton Walker with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. The Majesty Rail Recount for the St. Catherine Northwest constituency got on the way this morning at the St. Catherine Parish Court in Spanish Town. The Jamaica Labour Party is challenging the results from last Thursday's general election. JLP candidate Noon Amos was defeated by 22 votes to the People's National Party's Hugh Graham. The final tally was 5,283 votes for the PMP and 5,261 for the JLP. The JLP says the challenge is based on an assessment of the rejected ballots. MP-elect for St. Catherine North West, Hugh Graham, says he's confident the recount will yield the same result. I expect that um, the results would either be the same or my numbers go up uh, based on what we see and based on the recount that was done. So I'm feeling quite confident that um, you know, nothing won't change. This is just, you know, some excitement. And I guess that's, you know, that part of the, the course. Meanwhile, following his stunning loss of the central Manchester seat in the recently held general elections, the PMP's Peter Bunting says he'll not be running away from his constituency, which he has served for the last 13 years as Member of Parliament. Mr. Bunting made a comment in a video posted to social media site Facebook early this morning. Congrats to Rhoda and the JLP for their victory last week. And let me just say that I'm not going anywhere. I still maintain a home in Mandeville. Through Proven, we have an exciting project at Bloomfield Park to complete. And I look forward to seeing you all around in the weeks and months to come. This is the first time Mr. Bunting has commented since losing his seat to the JLP's Rhoda Moy Crawford by 985 votes. Consultant psychiatrist Dr. Winston De La Haye has revealed that more healthcare workers are seeking assistance to deal with the mental trauma due to increased workload on the front lines with COVID-19 patients. Dr. De La Haye says if this problem is not addressed, it could have a significant impact on the health system. The details in this report. The observation by the consultant psychiatrist follows recent complaints by physicians at the University Hospital of the West Indies about long hours and harsh working conditions. The island has been experiencing a sharp increase in the number of COVID-19 cases in recent weeks. Dr. Winston Delahaye says in addition to the physical burden of dealing with COVID-19 patients under harsh working conditions, all categories of medical staff have been showing signs of mental trauma. We're seeing that impact. So I'm part of a wellness support team for the health staff at the University Hospital of West Indies where I work. And this isn't just now lower tier workers, uh, and I'm not specifically referring to physicians. It includes nurses, any other member of the team. They are coming, they are presenting with complaints as we anticipated. And so the challenge with that is if you have X number of persons to care for those who fall ill, who are then being taken out by virtue of whether corona-related or mental health spin-offs of the corona issue, then you have less of us remaining to take care of you. So you see the, 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 the double challenge that we face. He is warning that there's a significantly increased risk of a spike in non-communicable diseases due to the impact of COVID-19 on the population and the delivery of health services. He says efforts are being made to keep clinics at major public hospitals open despite the challenges because there is a possibility that non-communicable diseases could explode after the pandemic. We're, we're doing our best to keep them open because there's another challenge, as you, as you can expect. If we lose focus and take our eyes off the non-communicable diseases, the hypertension, the diabetes, etc., then that's another thing, another wave coming to hit you. So we, we, we must keep those clinics open uh, and try to stay well so that we can extend ourselves to have all persons being treated for whatever condition they may have, especially the chronic non-communicable diseases. In the meantime, Dr. Delahaye says members of the public should self-evaluate and see if they are experiencing some form of mental strain due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have limits. All of us have limits. Some cope better than others. If it is, and I'm using now the presenting complaint of most persons I have been seeing, that you're having anxiety at sporadic times throughout the day, you're having difficulty sleeping in a sustained way despite all efforts to make adjustments. 
then you probably need to be at least seeking out assistance from trained persons. Any physician, uh, any clinic uh, would be able to manage issues like those. If it gets to diagnoses like post-traumatic stress disorder, that's a little different uh, and probably needs a, a psychiatric conclusion. But then there are the clinics there with those facilities as well. Or Shane Masters, TVJ News. Jamaica's COVID-19 cases continue to climb. The country has already has also recorded two more COVID-19 related deaths. The deceased are an 80-year-old woman and a 12-year-old boy who both had pre-existing health conditions and are from Manchester. The total deaths now stand at 38. The health ministry says four more deaths in COVID-19 positive individuals are also under investigation. In the meantime, the country recorded 114 new confirmed COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours. These bring the total number of cases on record for the island to 3,437. 27 more patients recovered from the virus, bringing the total recoveries to 1,019. Of the newly confirmed cases, there are 66 females and 48 males. Their ages range from 4 months to 93 years. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew, 47, Portland with 14, Manchester 13, St. James 12, Clarendon 12, St. Catherine 10, St. Thomas 2, St. Anne 2, Hanover 2. All 114 cases are under investigation. 26 moderately ill patients and 8 critically ill patients are among the 2,302 active cases now under observation in Jamaica. Meanwhile, the global death toll from the coronavirus has now passed 900,000 as worldwide cases top 27.7 million. According to the Reuters tally, the United States remains the world's worst affected country with deaths exceeding 190,000 and cases exceeding 6.3 million. Brazil is the second worst country in the world with 127,000 deaths, followed by India with nearly 74,000 dead. we we'll take a break now on Midday News. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Continuing the Midday News. The Planning Institute of Jamaica says Jamaica is not likely to see economic growth at least for another year. The PIOJ is projecting that the economy will continue contracting for the rest of the fiscal year. Director General at the PIOJ, Dr. Wayne Henry, made the disclosure in a media briefing yesterday. It is anticipated that all quarters of fiscal year 2020 to 2021 will record a contraction in output. Consequently, the PIOJ's projection for output is for a contraction within the range of 8% to 10% for the full fiscal year. Growth in output is expected to resume during fiscal year 2021 to 2022. Development eco economist Chris Stokes says the report of an estimated 18% contraction in the local economy in the last quarter has come as a shock. The Planning Institute of Jamaica, PIOJ, yesterday released preliminary data showing the economy contracted 18% in the April to June quarter when compared to the similar period last year. Mr. Stokes says while significant contraction was expected, the actual number is shocking. This is a shock. This is an outlier. You know, and all the literature talks about it being an unprecedented event and everybody at the beginning of whatever they're writing said, look, we really don't know what is going to happen because it is, it is, so, it is so unusual. Mr. Stokes says it's become increasingly clear that recovery from the economic shocks from COVID-19 will take longer than initially thought. We're going to be in, at this stage for a long time. You, you remember that all of us had hoped for what we call a V-shaped recovery, where we would you know, we'd drop off the edge of the cliff. Something would happen, not that it would disappear. Something good would happen and we would have a, a rapid recovery to where we were, were before. That's not going to happen. What we are looking at now is a sustained trough and then a slow recovery. The PIOJ has projected contraction within the range of 8 to 10 percent for the entire fiscal year. The Office of the National Rapporteur on Trafficking in Persons, ONR TIP, has officially launched its online resource library. As you'll hear in this report, the library, which is the first of its kind in the Caribbean, is expected to aid in the fight against human trafficking in Jamaica and the region at large. 
Prevention is better than cure. That comment from Deputy Prime Minister and National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang while speaking at a virtual launch of an online resource library for human trafficking in persons. According to Dr. Chang, perpetrators of the illegal practice are usually well organized, making it difficult to nab the culprits. He explains that the library will play a critical role in sensitizing various stakeholders in the fight against the illicit practice. Knowledge is maybe the most powerful tool that we can use to fight this horror crime. The more the wider society understands the challenges provide, the nature of the crime, and can have access to information, reliable and credible information, the more likely we are to overcome the, the challenge. It is a comprehensive, one-stop shop for researchers, policymakers, survivors, students, and all others wishing to learn more about TIP or trafficking in persons, and to access key tools and resources in their efforts to combat TIP. The Owner Tip Resource Library does the finding and the filtering for you, putting a wide-ranging collection of research and resources on human trafficking at your fingertips. There are very few online libraries that are tailored specifically to trafficking in persons. The Owner Tip Resource Library is therefore unique not only because of the clear focus on human trafficking in Jamaica, but also because of the comprehensive scope of what is offered. The National Rapporteur is charged with monitoring the government's response to victim protection and the prevention and prosecution of the crime. The government of Jamaica view human trafficking as one of the most serious crimes affecting our country and affecting the globe today. It's one that's sometimes overlooked as we look at the predicate offenses associated with human trafficking, sexual abuse, forced labor, and other activities, all of which exploit the human being. But this is particularly heinous when it involves our children. It's essentially modern slavery, and we have to veto that and make every effort to prevent the activity. Prince Moore, TVJ News. A Clarendon family is now without a home after fire destroyed their house early this morning. The incident happened around 5 o'clock at a property on Williams Avenue in Maypen. An estimate of the damage is not yet known. The family said they only managed to save a few items of clothing. They are laid down in the house and we just hear something go pop, pop, pop. I'm run out. I'm look inside the middle room. It's a big fire. And my brother in there, I me see my ball say, yeah, I'm going to dry him out and I just see if I can throw it too close, but everything burn up. It's believed one of the occupants started a fire by lighting a mattress in one of the rooms. The man was receiving care for mental illness. However, he's been missing treatment recently because the health workers have not been showing up for his appointments. We call him and they not come. My, uh, my grandmother called him a friend and he still not come. So, so how do you normally get the medication? Uh, we, we just call him and then come. A uh, lot of them come and give me a joke. And, and then go down there? Yeah, and in food and in something. So and from when you have medication? About one month now. Mental health is something that we ought to take seriously. And as a community, we ought to be our brother's keeper. This is a real sad situation. And if the medications are to be dispensed, I am going to beg of the authorities that are in charge to do so expeditiously and understand that mental health is not a joke. In sports, reggae girl Denisha Blackwood has signed with National Women's Soccer League Club Orlando Pride until the end of the season. The 23-year-old earned this deal after impressing with Slavia Prague in the Czech Republic. Blackwood and Prague advanced to the round of 16 of the UEFA Women's Champions League. and They also won the 2019-2020 Czech title. Blackwood would be joining countrywoman Konya Plummer at the Florida-based club. Blackwood was a member of Jamaica's squad at the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup in France. Their left-sided players scored three goals in 22 appearances for the Rega girls. In the fall season of the NWSL, 
is slated to kick off on September 19. And that's the midday news. I'm Milton Walker. Join us at 7 for primetime news on behalf of the news, sports and production teams. Good afternoon. Thank <laughs> you.